Today on F Judgment, we are finally fixing my completely, completely foobarred iPhone screen with a little help from this guy. Do I have to touch that thing? Yeah, be really careful though, because you're going to slash your finger. This episode of App Judgment is brought to you by the 2012 Ford Fiesta. This is Annie's long-suffering iPhone. You've been carrying this around like this for what, two months? Yes, and I've been um, receiving a lot of well-deserved mockery about this phone. Um, it's this a cold is, audience. Is, is, is this scotch tape that you're seeing um, on top of it? I had to put the tape around it because as you can see, I have a screen protector on here that's coming off because it's a cheap little thing. And if I take off the screen protector, it's going to flake off and probably like cut my hand open. So I put some tape on it as a quick fix, and the quick fix has turned into uh, about four weeks of using this phone in, in anticipation of this segment. So I hope you guys appreciate this. You should actually. I actually decided apparently I needed to be more invested in this segment than I already am, so I dropped my phone this morning. <laughs> actually, by accident. Oddly enough, I had actually picked up a replacement part last week for a phone I no longer own. Um, so we should actually. Should we talk about the tools first? Or sure. We, okay. So the really interesting thing about our friends at Apple is they don't want you to actually be able to open anything. Right. So they've invented what I will affectionately call the pentalobe screw. Can I say that on the show? Probably pentalobe not. Screw. No, it was the part before pentalobe. Um, but so what's really cool about our friends at iFixit, iFixit.com is the website. Um, they have the iPhone 4 Liberation Kit. The early iPhones had regular double zero Phillips screws. Which are these. Yes, which are miserable but yeah. manageable. And then they moved to the pentalobe screws, which, which is, is the one on one. that one. Yeah, so I probably have pentalobe screws on mine and we can see your phone is leaking water. That's really <laughs> scaring me. Um, and I, it occurs to me like the one thing we could really use that I don't have is a magnifying glass. But yep, you have pentalobe screws on there. I thought we might start out with something easy. Okay. Because replacing the front screen basically requires stripping the entire phone. Not like field stripping, but like literally taking the entire phone apart. It's going to yes. be a long, painful process. It's not as simple as just taking the screen off. You have to remove. You, you have, have to, to get to the screen. To the yes. Yeah, you kind of have to like, you have to pretty much go through this part of the phone to get to the screen. So I thought we might, since conveniently I shattered my screen this morning, can I see one of the pentalobe ones? I thought maybe we'd do a really fast one, which is swapping this out. So the pentalobe screws are a nightmare. You'll know when you're in the screw because it'll just kind of, you'll feel the resistance. Super easy to strip these out um, if you screw it up, like if you sort of jam it. But you get it in there, and look at that, kids. I'm actually removing the pentalobe screw. Oh, well, if we got it this time. Yeah, I hate these screws with the fiery passion of a thousand suns. Push the rear panel towards the top edge of the iPhone. So this would be the top edge of the iPhone. Ah, <sighs> ta-da! Panel will move about two millimeters, so as I fix it, we're going to lift the rear panel away from the iPhone. Lift the rear panel away from the iPhone and place the panel on the ground. This is very important. Authorized service personnel only. So apparently it's okay to go this far into the phone. <laughs> <laughs> this is the replacement back, or what I affectionately think of as the cool guy replacement back. It is clear, you will be able to see my battery. Ah. How's that for fancy? We're going to make sure we try to put the back on facing the right way. The camera lens is a nice indicator. There we go. Ooh, it's a snug fit. And now comes a really horrible part that I will try not to curse my way through. That'll give you an idea of what we're in for. Well, that wasn't too bad, right? Um, we're going to fix uh, this guy next, but first, let's make our sponsor. Once again, we're sponsored by Ford this week, and we have our 2012 Fiesta back. The 2012 Ford Fiesta features intelligent access with push-button start. The remote keyless entry eliminates the need for keys and starts your Fiesta with the push of a button. We can't say enough about the simplicity of being able to walk up to the car, open the door, and drive away without fishing around in your pocket. Thanks again to Ford for sponsoring us this week. All right, we got ourselves a spudger. We got ourselves a couple screwdrivers. We got a screw mat and some pain relievers, we're ready to fix my iPhone. All right, well, I should probably turn this off first, right? That would be a very okay. good idea. Goodbye, possibly forever. Goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> okay, now, so there's glass kind of flaking off on the 
on this side of this protector. That's not too bad. Protector in name only, I might add. All right, your turn. <laughs> you mean my turn. <laughs> yeah, Annie, I thought she you were doing this. <laughs> I'll do it, I'll do it. Step one, rear panel, remove the two 3.6 millimeter pentalobe screws. So Just your big challenge now, you have okay. to slide the back off like I did. Do Without not cutting shred myself. your fingertips. Step two, push the panel up. Step three, pull the rear panel away. Step four, time to get the battery. Remove the single 1.5 millimeter Phillips screw. Step five, get your spudger and pry the battery connector up. Step six, pull the battery loose. Look at all that glue. Ugh. Oh my goodness, wow. Step seven, dock connector cable. Remove the two 1.8 millimeter Phillips screws. Step eight, get your spudger, pry the dock cable up. Step nine, peel the dock connector cable off the adhesive. Just tearing apart your several hundred dollar phone. Oh, it's ex like almost exactly the color of my fingernails, actually. Step 10, remove the 1.6 millimeter Phillips screw. Step 11, get your spudger again. It's time to pry the cellular antenna cable up from its socket. This is exactly like playing operation, actually. Step 12, rear camera, lots of screws. Step 13, lift the cable cover. Step 14, time to remove the camera. Get your spudger, pry the rear camera connector up. Be careful not to break any components when you're prying and remove the rear camera from the iPhone. Step 15, logic board. Remove five cables near the top of the logic board. First the headphone jack, then the power button cable, then the front facing camera cable, the digitizer cable, and finally the display data cable. Step 16, Use a small flathead screwdriver to remove the 4.8 millimeter standoff near the headphone jack. Step 17, remove the grounding clip. Step 18, get your spudger and disconnect the Wi-Fi antenna from the logic board. Step 19, remove the 1.6 millimeter Phillips screw securing the logic board near the power button. Step 20, more screws. Step 21, lift the logic board from the end closest to the speaker enclosure and slide it away from the top edge of the iPhone. Look at that. We have a logic right. board, ladies and gentlemen. Step 22, don't lose the small grounding finger for the rear facing camera. Step 23, time to pry out the vibrator. I wish you guys could hear what I'm hearing right now. It's like this little tiny ripping noise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Step 24, the display assembly. Remove the 2.4 millimeter Phillips screws from the side of the speaker enclosure. Step 25, remove the small plastic bracket. Step 26, remove the speaker enclosure assembly from the iPhone. Step 27, remove the small piece of black tape covering the display mounting tab. We're lucky, no tape covering the display mounting tab. Wow, tabs. how exciting. <laughs> what a treat. Step 28, remove the 1.6 millimeter Phillips screw securing the display assembly near the power button. Step 29, remove the Phillips screw near the headphone jack. Step 30, remove the 1.6 millimeter Phillips screw near the lower microphone. Step 31, another Phillips screw near the dock connector cable. This is the part where like a Labrador retriever just comes running in out of nowhere and just jumps on the table and everything flies everywhere. Step 32, loosen, not much, the three large headed Phillips screws along the volume button side of the phone. Step 33, three more large headed screws along the other side of the iPhone. Step 34, big go. payoff people. You're supposed to use a plastic opening tool, your spudger to pry up the display assembly, but we used our knife to separate the assembly from the iPhone frame. And you know what? Once you've cleaned up the glass and the sticky mess off the front of the iPhone, it's time to, well, go all the way back through the other 33 steps. Oh, oh my God. I can actually see through the through the glass. Look at that. I wish you could right. see this, folks. She's scrolling through hundreds of tweets right now. She's typing in. Success. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to point to you to the lovely iFixit.com team who did actually, in fact, donate the lovely Verizon iPhone 4 screen we installed today, iFixit.com, the premier center for well, actually, directions for repairing devices, including cell phones, MacBooks, and a whole lot of other stuff. They actually they started actually with like iPhones, iPods, 
uh, MacBooks, and they've expanded to a whole lot of other stuff. Good people, good parts, and uh, lots of nice toolkits. Thank so. you again to Patrick and the good people over at iFixit. Um, don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Google+, and of course at revision3.com. Thanks for watching.